everybody, welcome to Back Here Some Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So this is Fantastic Four Full Circle. This came out last year, but it originally came about in the 90s when uh, Alex Ross was presented with an idea that Marvel was trying out, where they were like, hey, why don't we make new things that are callbacks or references or payoffs to things that never got resolution or didn't need resolution from our heyday during the Lee, Kirby, Steve Ditko kind of time. Hmm. And Alex Ross was like, I love that idea. And then they didn't do it. And then like a decade later, they were like, hey, let's do that. In fact, wouldn't it be cool if you, Alex Ross, worked with Stan Lee to do that idea? We could get Stan Lee and I bet Stan would love to do it. And Alex Ross is like, cool, so when you say I can work with Stan Lee, what that means is I can write it, draw it, Stan can then ruin it with his bad dialogue and then he can take credit for it? Pass. Fair. So that Ooh. never happened. Okay. Because Ross is a big booster of Kirby and that is definitely the narrative uh, uh, if okay. you're looking at Marvel from the vantage point of Jack Kirby. Because he really wanted to do it himself. He really wanted to write it and draw it and really approach it from the Jack Kirby perspective. And part of that is him abandoning his usual style of art, which is why Tiffany's here, uh, because I really wanted Tiffany's per uh, perspective on this. Okay. Uh, he didn't paint it. Oh. He penciled it, he inked it himself, oh. and he also wanted to use kind of this classic 60s and 70s color palette. Yeah. And he wanted to infuse the kind of artistic influence that Kirby was using in his Fantastic Four runs back in the day. It deals with the negative zone, and whenever the Fantastic Four would go into the negative zone and Kirby was drawing it, he would also use like collage and photo reference to showcase the kind of like otherness of that negative zone. Like how crazy dimension. it would be. Yeah, like it's just, it, especially with his characters set against that concept. I definitely saw like some of the colors on the cover look like that classic comic dot style. Oh yes. Where like they're filling in the shading with that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's half tone. Yes. Well, I mean the dot, the, there is a printing method in which it looks like dots because it's like a cheap printing on newsprint, <laughs> uh -huh. but then like, you know, when they use like the fadeaway thing, it's half tone. Yes. Huh. So see how like this is the negative zone as it's portrayed by Jack Kirby. Whoa! And so he wanted to kind of give you that stuff. The, the funny thing is, it's Alex Ross, so it's already photo real. So how does he accomplish that? And so he does it by using like colors and. That's well, neat. I drew it, and then I took a picture of it, and then I put it in the comic book. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is also. The uh, a, a joint effort between Marvel, because of course it's Marvel and it's their book, but also with the company Abrams Comic Arts. And Abrams Comic Arts is just some other company that worked with Ross to make this thing happen. So it's not wow. technically a Marvel comic. It is an Abrams Comic Art publication. Uh, and Oh yeah, that's why it says Marvel Arts. Yeah, exactly. Well, that, that logo is like... Old. It is old. It looks old. And it <laughs> should make you think of a bygone era that should, for no good reason, be bygone. And it's one of the things I wanted to talk about as well, which is that, like, Marvel should be doing this all the time. Mm. And, oh, wait, they used to 30 years ago. Here is some mundane, random Punisher story called Kingdom Gone from Chuck Dixon and Jorge Zafino. And it's the exact same effing thing, but published by Marvel. Huh. Marvel's making the exact same size and hardcover editions of just stuff. There's a Spider-Man book that did the exact same thing, which I have and I couldn't find it, so I don't have a literal physical reference for it, but trust me, <laughs> it exists. And I Marvel don't trust did you, this. I'm sorry. I know. But Not after the last time. <laughs> if you're gonna tout yourself as the leader of the comic book industry, even by just putting saying yeah, by saying it or putting all the books on the shelves and out and, and dwarfing everyone else's print runs then like take a minute and try something. Even if it's something from 30 years ago that was more innovative than anything you're doing now. Uh, but it worked. It, I think it worked. Uh, now, it didn't work enough for them to remember it and keep doing it, and I don't have like legions of these, but I've seen a bunch of these. We have a Silver Surfer one just like this one as well. D do you think Alex Ross was just like, I really like that format, I yeah. wanna make it like that? Absolutely. I, I think, this reminds me, of Black Label. Oh yeah, well Black Label is a very similar, if not the same size and dimensions. DC is quicker to do it. I also was going to pull a Batman book from around the same time, a little bit earlier, called Batman Digital Justice. Uh -huh. But that's DC, and DC 
is no stranger to trying new things, even if those things are quickly abandoned by DC. Uh, and so it's it's really apples and oranges when you talk about like taking P's and Q's. Oh, I know, but I meant like, you know, but yeah, Black Label's in... Black Label is now currently a thing that DC is doing that is this size and dimensions, and it's just not some hardcover. <laughs> yeah, some of them. And it's weird and frustrating that like, this great, beautiful comic book came from Marvel, and it didn't really. It mm. came from another publisher, and it just, by the grace of, well, it's Alex Ross. I guess we could let him do that. You know? Mm -hmm. like Let's not piss him off. You're right. I like that this looks like a storybook because of its length. Yeah. Where I'm just like, okay, everybody. Yes, watch as Punisher murders people viciously. Hey. When you hear the gun reload, ch -ch -ch, you it's, know it's time, time to, to turn, turn the page. page. The concept for this originally was let's pull something from the Fantastic Four's history yeah. that we touched upon right. and now we can bring back yeah. and that's coming full circle. Like It's inoffensive and non-disruptive. Mm, so okay. it could or couldn't, it doesn't matter. And mm. that's the best kind of original graphic novel. The kind that can add to without subtracting from but also could be its own thing. Mm, okay. That's what we all thought Black Label was going to be. Right. And Marvel still could do if you want. I should also point out that uh, Jack Kirby um, was a huge influence on Alex Ross's approach to this from not just his, you know, 2000s era screw Stan Lee attitude, but also in his approach to the designs for these characters. Uh, there's actually a really fun YouTube video that Alex Ross has that showcased him drawing this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, he kit bashed a bunch of Fantastic Four, like, action figure maquettes and then put them in positions and then photograph them and then drew from those photographs. Oh, cool. And so uh, once you see those, th those, those figures, you're like, oh, that's exactly what this is. And that's kind of really cool to see the process and all that. But uh, And I got my uh, <laughs> Stretch Armstrong for Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I think he just exaggerates for Mr. Fantastic. But the Mr. Fantastic facial design was very much um, a, a thing that he noticed that apparently Jack Kirby drew from an actor of the 50s as his uh, reference point for Mr. Fantastic, mm -hmm. which Ross didn't know until long after he had already been drawing the Fantastic Four from time to time, mm -hmm. and then was like, oh my god, and then just started using that actor's reference. Contacted the old actor and was like, I want to use your face. Is that cool? And he's like, yeah, knock yourself out. That's nice. Yeah, it is really cool. But that's why Mr. Fantastic is kind of like a- Distinct. He's a strong-chinned hero. It's why he looks like practically Henry Cavill. And it's like, oh man, could Henry Cavill be a cool Mr. Fantastic? I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, look at this. Ooh. This. Yeah, how many things unfold? Yeah, this cover is Wee. Ross's re-depiction of the origin. And if you look at it side by side, it is just basically recreating key panels from those sequences. This is also told from the perspective of the Invisible Woman. Uh, in which she talks about things through the lens of like poor Ben. Mm. You know, that's true. We often think that way. Oh yeah, certainly on this couch. But uh, Ben Grimm in this it, case, guys. yeah. Uh, ben had words with Reed before the launch. Reed was too cocky and headstrong and needed to go. If they had not and listened to Ben, perhaps they wouldn't be the Fantastic Four today. I'm telling you, I'm sensing cosmic rays out there. Yeah, well, he was just like, wait, what are we doing? And how are we going to do it? And what's the plan here and why? And uh, so they went up there and they did that and became the Fantastic Four. And Ben was the only one whose change was permanent. Like, you know, Reed unraveled, Sue disappeared, Johnny burst into flames, but they all eventually turned it off. But Ben is always a rock monster. Right. And so... You know, they became the Fantastic I mean, Four. Reed is always stretchy. He is always stretchy, but, but like, he did, like, he, he can reform. Yeah. I, he has an original state. He does, He isn't just always noodles, <laughs> which would be horrific. Wow. This is the rest of the episode, me just looking at these pages and you two sitting in silence. Yes. Hey, give it. me that. Oh, no, we got to do the episode. No, I oh. just want to look at it. It's like going to a museum. Shut up. Let me look at it. <laughs> just let me enjoy the art. Well, am I allowed food and drink? No. Oh, I hate the museum. Franklin and Valeria are basically teenagers. So it's okay. well, whatever. And no one's going to complain. Not only because it's gorgeous, but also because like... We hardly ever see them. We hardly ever see them. No, we do. They're, they're actually really integral nowadays, but... And Franklin's definitely not a mutant. Mm. 
Ross couldn't care less. I know. But yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's only one creator at Marvel that really cares about that kind of thing. <laughs> but Ben is up late. He's uh, making a Dagwood sandwich, and he's very excited about it. Uh, Johnny, of course, interrupts him and spooks him, which makes the thing smash the sandwich by accident. Yeah, so Johnny just never tires of that stuff. No, he doesn't. Well, it's also, this is a throwback. The sure. idea, even, even to the point where I don't think that Ross scripted the book. Now, I don't have any authority on that, but I... I did I, he I, Stan Lee himself? Yeah, I think he deliberately did that, because that's what, that's what Jack used to do. Jack would draw the book, and then what would happen if Stan would come in. But, I mean, you know, Jack wrote the story. Alex Ross wrote the story. I know where it all goes. I don't know what they'd say, and I don't want to cover up all the pretty pages with my stupid words. So I'm just going to have them say really simple, easy to understand kind of dialogue. That being said, the dialogue is in no way offensive or annoying. It, it, it is a bit of a throwback, but S Reed doesn't go, uh, Sue, uh, make Ben another sandwich. <laughs> it doesn't have all of the, the Stan Lee-isms that you'd come to expect from a classic Lee uh, Kirby Fantastic Four story. I Nor is he does. talking about what happened last episode. No. Or issue. No, he's not also like giving them fantastic new powers off panel. <laughs> they notice that there's an intruder in the, in the Baxter building. And they're like, oh crap. And he's like, cool looking. He's like, oh crap, if only if I were a rock monster and you could turn into flames. Oh, wait a minute. Yay. They, <laughs> Put they, my sandwich. They, well, that's, that's, that's done. That's the, over. The sandwich is over. Yeah, you'll have to make the a new sandwich. The sandwich didn't have a chance. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they rush him, and the figure collapses in the thing's arms. Oh. Uh, the invisible woman arrives, and she's completely invisible because uh, she's not wearing anything, because she and Reed were in the middle of something. And it's great, because she's like, look out, he's moving! And Johnny's like, why are you totally invisible? She's like, shut up! And he's like, gross. <laughs> and Reed, why are we only seeing your top half? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just putting on pants with my toes in the other room. Which is something he could do. Thank you. Ah. Yeah, that's what 30 years of comics reading will get you. <laughs> that, that mental gymnastics. Uh, he is fully clothed, by the way, when Reed does stretch into the scene, but he is wearing basically like whatever he had on the ground. So Reed and Sue join the fray. They assist Johnny and Ben in getting the collapsed person onto what is a super science table to analyze this character. And when they it's remove... actually just the kitchen counter, but everything it, in there is super science. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a crazy counter. I just want to make a sandwich. It's just analyzing everything I put on there, <laughs> making me feel bad. Yeah, it has calorie counts and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm all bad. <laughs> Oh Should no. be eating all this. <laughs> I'm made of rocks. I can't gain or lose weight. So they move the shroud, and it reveals the face of a crazy-looking dude. And the thing is like, wait a minute. I know if, that guy. If by crazy you mean kind of also looks like the thing but not Rocky? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, what a hideous man. How horrible. God, could you imagine being like that? Uh, no, I couldn't imagine that at all. Yeah. <laughs> Jerks. Yeah, and by the way, he does look like that kind of on purpose. This character was in one of the most famous Fantastic Four stories in Fantastic Four 51, Lo, This Man, This Monster. It's one of the most classic uh, the, the Thing stories. He's, and I wanted to cover that story. Maybe one day we'll just do that issue in its entirety on the couch, because I think it's a really fun issue. But it's pretty short. It's one issue. And the idea is, there's this dude, and he's a scientist too. And he's like, man, I hate Reed Richards, and I want to kill him and take his stuff. I know what I'll do. The thing is feeling sorry for himself and wandering the streets. I'll lure him in. I'll take. I'll knock him out. I'll steal his visage and infiltrate the Fantastic Four. In that same huh. issue, Reed Richards discovers the Negative Zone, and so. Oh wow. Yeah. Just joins the Fantastic. He's just like, hey, it's me, ya bum. I don't know what he says. I don't. I didn't really do a lot of research. And so what happens is Reed goes to investigate the the, the Negative Zone. Uh, he ends up getting stuck there. This character who impersonated the thing kind of comes to understand the nature of the Fantastic Four, who everybody is, and like their self-sacrificing nature. He like learns that the thing is not just some monster you can discard. He like has friends and like a spirit and they and they trust him. You know, like Reed's like, okay, I'm gonna do what I can to get you out of here and I'll be trapped in the Phantoms or in the negative zone forever. And he's like, why would you do that for a horrible monster? Yeah, more or less that. And so he, that is to say, the impersonating thing, uh, basically- Thing two. Yeah, thing two. He hooks Reed through the portal and just le just remains and is doomed, stuck in the negative zone. So thing two, who was going to steal yeah. all the Fantastic Four and stuff- kill Reed. Realizes how great they are yes. and sacrifices himself so that the Fantastic Four can continue on. That's right. 
And then they're all really sad, and then Thing shows up and goes, what are you, what are you doing? And they're like, oh! <laughs> oh, you're here! That, and they're like, oh my god, what happened? I guess somebody like impersonated, well, also it ends well. Wait, they knew someone impersonated them? Well, they find out because Thing shows up, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, oh, okay, well. I just assumed it'd be like, how'd you get out of there? I don't know. No, no, they, they figure it out within like two panels, and they go, okay, well, whatever. Wow, I just... Because, like, if someone was still in the negative zone, I figured they would go back for them. Nah. It's, it's, a, it's a rough place. <laughs> Annihilus rules it. There's a lot of un, unsavory characters out oh, there. Oh, shit. So, He's also not Rocky. No. Was he, was he not Rocky? Before. Yeah. Well, he wasn't Rocky when he was just a regular guy, but when he stole the thing's look, he just yeah, happened to... He uses to, a thing. Yeah. Not the An thing. imaging changer. A thing. A thing. Can mm -hmm. we just talk about his use of light? Yes. Oh. Isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. He's actually sitting on a drive near. This isn't like digital no. sketching. No, that's what's really cool. You get digital... to see the sequence of him like brush painting okay, cool. all, the, all the line it's art. It's digital colors. Yes. And some of it, it has to be a combo of like enhanced pencils and brush work. Wouldn't surprise me, but in the sequence we saw, oh. he is hand painting most of the inking. Or hand inking. It's just so stupidly good. And like his color choices. I mean, there's another person who worked on the colors with him. Yes. It's totally fair. There's mm -hmm. a lot to color in this. Right. But like. Oh. But following this direction, book. this is his idea. Like. All right, I have to get this back to you because otherwise <laughs> we're, never, we're literally never going to get through this. Yeah. I don't, I don't even want to read it. I mean, I should yeah. want to read it, but like I just want to look at it. Well, that's the idea. And the, that's if the idea. There are words in here? My God. <laughs> if it works, like. Some comic books really work this way, but you should be able to read the story without reading any of the words. And that's and like I go on record and say like I think you need a writer and an artist. I but think like, you do too. I think in instances where the writer is the artist, yeah, you can do it. Absolutely, and I think it's okay. Well, and I think in any Jack Kirby story, you can do it. Well, yeah. So here he is again, and they're like, "Oh my God!" And he's covered with all this crap, and the crap is evoking the look of what Johnny was in when he died in the negative zone in another era of Fantastic Four, which is more modern. I thought it was just hair. Yeah, no, it's like bugs and A crap. disturbing amount of hair. A very, yes. <laughs> Thank you for playing that card. Yeah, so they're like, that's weird. And then the, uh, the figure's mouth starts to move and it explodes as a portal is opened from his mouth and out blast just these horrible interdimensional insectoid creatures. Someone get this man a mint. <laughs> so they completely fill the room and the Fantastic Four is spring into action, you know, Human Torch bursts into flames, starts trying to burn them. The Invisible Thing, woman pretend you're a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I only need to be scared by Johnny Storm in order to do it. <coughs> so Invisible Woman makes like little orbs around as many as she can, but there, there's, there's so many. It's a portal in the dude's mouth, so they're just gonna endlessly start firing out of there. So Reed grabs a doohickey from wherever and essentially closes the portal. So now it's we have just to a deal big cork. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so now that that's shut, we have to deal with all of this, and they're all just blasting everywhere, and they're trying to get into the Fantastic Four's mouths. And so. Uh, Reed activates a defense system within the building, which just target all the intruders, and it just blasts everything in the room. And so they're all dead. And it knows not to blast the guy well, they're not intruders. on the table. Yeah, well, they're, yeah, that's true. It, it would have just been like, Psst. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because he's not necessarily even an intruder anymore, because he's not alive. The, the building knows, they're like, oh, they're trying to help him. <laughs> exactly. The, the building understands subtlety. It's sentient. <laughs> so. They kill that, and they're like, okay, that was crazy. And his body would seem to be some kind of interdimensional gateway. And so it came from the negative zone. I guess we're going to have to check out the negative zone. Uh, it's great because while they're talking about it, Sue is like, I I'm going to leave. And she just wanders off. And when she comes back, you know, everybody's wearing what they were wearing when they went to bed. Uh, Sue is wearing a Fantastic Four uniform. She's like, well, I guess we're Fantastic Fouring up. Like, I'm just preemptively getting ready. I know what's gonna happen. We're gonna go to the negative zone, aren't we? <laughs> and so they're like, yep. But Reed is like, I mean, listen, we don't have to go to the negative zone. You know, this was, this was kind of a messed up thing, but like, I understand if you, don't, if you don't wanna go. And she's like, this thing invaded our home where our children sleep. We're going. So okay. they spring into action and, and, and Reed is like, 
Okay, uh, actually, this is a great opportunity for me to test Alex Ross's new cool Fantastic Four designs. I mean to say, uh, my new awesome suits that can penetrate between dimensions and protect us from the antimatter that exists within the negative zone. Uh, and it just so happens to coincide with cool new costumes that if Alex Ross were given the opportunity to, to take over Fantastic Four, which of course he wanted to do back in the 2000s, uh, we could do. This color palette, I'm just all about it. It's on the back of that. I know. But seeing it there, it's better. It, I think the colors print better there. Yeah. Is that Herbie? That is Herbie, yeah. Herbie the love robot? <laughs> Herbie was a robot that was created I asked from, about that. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> so what? The idea was in the... Reed's busy. They made this, like, cartoon show for the Fantastic Four back in the day, and they were so worried that children would set themselves ablaze to emulate the powers of the Human Torch that they just eliminated him from the show. And I'm like, well, then you you don't want to make Fantastic Four. He's literally one of the Fantastic Four. He's also <laughs> one of the most fan favorite characters. And Here like, comes the three. And they're like, don't, no, 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 don't worry. There'll be four of them. Terrific what? We'll replace three. we'll replace the Human Torch with a robot named Herbie, which stands for something. Why Who also they, sets himself on fire? <laughs> why wouldn't they just replace him with the robot Human Torch? Because he's still setting himself on fire. But he's a robot. Yeah, but kids tied towels around their necks and jumped off the roof because they thought they were Superman. Quick, Jimmy, pull on my arm and dislocate it. I'm going to be Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stretching. They turn on their view screen, looks into the negative zone, and it's, by the way, a recreation of another sequence that I remember from either 19, issue 51 or one of the issues in the hundreds. I don't remember. But, like, it is just Alex Ross's version of what Jack Kirby depicted in the negative zone. And I'm like, eh. You got nice. a really weird silverfish out there. Yeah, it's really cool. It's also like the size of a skyscraper. Uh, but just don't forget, like when we do go in there, we're gonna have to like run into some shit like Annihilus, who is a huge mess that we don't want to deal with. Remember the annihilation wave? And I'm like, hey. But they don't like cite anything. They're just like, mm. oh, is that why everything looked like bugs? Yeah. Oh, well, because cool. like bugs are the default species in the negative zone or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But uh, look at that Kirby crackle. I know. Yeah. Everybody dons their awesome new. Vibranium laced unstable molecules Fantastic Four uniforms, which are also awesome and have a new logo that Alex Ross designed for the so, team. Wait, Sue had a, it's like Reed was like, honey, I you know have you, to change. I know you put your outfit on, but like, mm. yes, that's exactly what happens. She's <laughs> like, I'm ready, and he's like, I, you're gonna hate me for this. <laughs> and Ben, enjoy having protection right around the waist. Oh, the thing goes still shorts for me, huh? I ran out of material. Look, they were, those he, aren't shorts. He can't run out of material. We'll talk about why later on, but we've said on this couch, the thing's costume is as horribly disfigured body. I'm sorry. Uh, as Neil I Gaiman said, We need to see it. You're more interesting looking that way. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, all right, well, what spaceship are we going to take? And Reed's like, I, we're not going to take a spaceship or a cool fantastic car, but let's take a look at a couple of them right here. Let's as run we past go. them. Run past them. And like, look at this sequence where they show how they go into the negative zone, where it's like we go past the, the awesome space cars, we go into the interdimensional doorway, and then we just jump through Kirby Crackles to get there. The, the idea being that, like... You can just do this anytime you want. We can just jump in now, wearing these crazy suits. Mm. And uh, and I kind of want to test how we're going to get back. Like, it's just... I think it'll be cool. We're going to try it out. I have so much faith in these... I'm not entirely sure if we're going to get back, but uh, hey, why not? Basically that. But he's like, no, I don't. I'm not pretty sure how we're going to get back. We're going to get back. Oh, yeah. I just don't but know. But maybe it's going to be in a decade. Right. It, it'll take time. So maybe they, Franklin and Valeria will have to save us. I mean, they are smart enough and can, we're capable enough to do that. So then they jump into the negative zone. Oh, interesting. He went this route. Like, he decided to draw it himself, which yes. is cool. Yeah, but he didn't use... Yeah, but he didn't, like, do this. Mm -mm. That I'm a little surprised by. Yeah. It's an homage, though. It is an homage. It's, like, it's a truly an homage versus just doing this again. Right, right. <laughs> I love whoever's saying, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> That's the thing. The thing <laughs> is a wet blanket the entire ride. Uh, so Well, yeah, he's only got shorts. Seeing him like this, I understand why. He reminds me of a big baby. <laughs> the thing? Yes. <laughs> it's like he's wearing a diaper. Yeah, it is like that. But he needs it. Otherwise, you'll see his shame. His big rocky shame. <laughs> or he could just have a whole suit. <laughs> Pants and arms. Sometimes he does. He's fun looking. Yeah, sometimes he wears like a sleeveless tee. Like a, or like a onesie. Yeah, or a onesie. I hate that look. They're all wearing onesies. 
I, I get him being like, I used to wear clothes. I like to wear clothes. I want to no. wear clothes. No, and Reed would approach it like Ethan, where it's like, no, you have to wear clothes. We have to wear clothes. But if you don't have to wear clothes, I don't want to wear clothes. It's like if you found out that, like, I could take a pill instead of brushing my teeth. Yeah. Oh, Done. I don't have to do this anymore? Immediately. I'll take it. I'll well, take two. Out of all of us, Ethan could become the thing, and that's fine then. He'll he would. Re Ethan is Mr. Fantastic, would rather be the thing. So Reed is tracking the like energy signature or whatever, who cares, of the swarm that invaded. So they're tracking like where it came from. We're just gonna follow along and go through the negative zone to find the origin point of this swarm that invaded our house and who dropped this corpse portal on our doorstep because it turns out it wasn't really that guy. It just looked like that it guy. It was like a shell of a man. Yes, and it was a, oh. it was a, kind of like a message about like leaving your garbage in the negative zone. So we made a mold out of him and turned yeah. it into a portal. Exactly. So it wasn't that dude. It wasn't that dude. It just looked like that dude, and it was kind of like, hey, look at that final homage. But that dude will show up in this book, though. So oh, good. They, uh, they're, they're, they're tracking the swarm. Reed like pulls the hardware from the suit he's literally using to track it. Ben's like, do I have that in my shorts? Yeah, go ahead. Fiddle around there. <laughs> Not on panel, though. We don't yeah, want to get... No, we don't want to get... by the comic store authority. <laughs> exactly. You'll make God cry. So they end up in An Annihilus' cave. They're just like, oh, crap. We're in Annihilus' place. Quick, Sue, make us all invisible. So she does, and we see Annihilus just kind of like eating some bugs. And it's great because they're like, I didn't know Annihilus ate things. I thought he was like a half-robot creature. And it's like, yeah, he eats stuff. He eats bugs. It's gross. I thought he was a bug he is. robot person. He's a bug robot. Most oh, bugs what? eat themselves. Yeah, why are you talking about bugs? Eat bugs all the time. That's yeah, right. but like it's a buggy bug world. Annihilus is not who we're looking for, but we're going the negative zone, and I'm not gonna not draw Annihilus. So right. here you go. Oh, and look at this little keg around his uh, neck for brandy. <laughs> yeah, that's if anybody uh, falls unconscious and doesn't want to get in the negative zone. <laughs> yeah, in the negative zone, it doesn't die of, exo of exposure. <laughs> so Reed establishes like it's not Annihilus. It normally would be, but it isn't this time. Despite the fact that it was bugs, and he's eating bugs, and he is a bug, and he's Annihilus just has his legs up on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's watching at home. TV. Yeah, they're in his house. They're just like, w what the hell? He's yeah. got snacks. He's just like, huh? Yeah. He just heard something. That's it. Forward. <laughs> no one's here. No one's oh. watching. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, film. Post to TikTok. <laughs> Check. Oh! Check this down. <laughs> Take this down. <laughs> hey, who's filming me? Don't make this a sound. <laughs> what do you mean 10,000 people have used this sound? <laughs> Oh no! I'm actually entertained by some of these. <laughs> so the, you know, some bugs notice them. They they notice them on their way in because it's like a '50s B movie where they're walking through the caves. You see the creatures like watching and they clicking to themselves. Then they dive in and Sue makes a bubble around them. And then uh, Johnny clears a path through his uh, fire powers. And then Just, how close are they to a nihilist now? Is he they're like, like right outside his house. He's like, huh? oh, he's he shows up. He, he doesn't show up and go like, now I'm the villain of the book. But he is like, hey. That's my snacks. He's like, get the hell out of my house, old man. <laughs> so they, uh, so then they reveal the true villain who sent the corpse portal and the creatures. Corpse portal is a dope band name. Yes. What music do they play? Corpse portal. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, it sounds like thrash. That would be death metal. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe black metal. Black metal. Yeah. What, what, uh, on the on the scale of hardcore, does it go metal? Death metal, black metal, or or death and black kind of on the same scale. I would consider black metal to be like more hardcore <laughs> than death metal. <laughs> death metal is angrier. Black metal is like doom and destruction. Yeah. But it's kind of beautiful in a way. Oh. But still like really heavy and dark. I like that idea that the the further along you get, the more like into entropy you get, it becomes beauty. It's like oh, like you like the, like the song of a black hole. They're so. an indie folk band. <laughs> <laughs> We're Corpse Portal. Now let's do a cover of the band. Like, Mr. Spaceman coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> so then we see uh, their, their true villain revealed, and he is just made up of horrible faces that are all pulled from 50s B movies. They're the Metal Mutant. Oh my God! <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the idea that they would be enveloped in total darkness were it not for the human torch lighting himself up and their colors kind of like reflecting and from the it's light. Like it's the, the, a... it's the, the freaking, ah, uh, like they're mostly in the colors of printing and just, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is one of them just a giant eyeball or a brain? I mean, everything is homaged in here, but 
Damn. I love this. Ah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so they're unknown and heretofore not identified assailant, the villain, mm -hmm. reveals that, I, like, I knew you couldn't resist accepting my invitation. Cool. Oh, for dinner? Good. <laughs> <laughs> they plunge the Fantastic Four into darkness and then string them up using the horrible monsters that they are surrounded by, trying to shove th more of these, like, bug creatures into their mouths to take them over. Oh. And to control them, or whatever the plan is. Um, essentially, they describe them as being like living vessels. I think the plan is I'm going to send my emissaries and myself in you, send you back through the negative zone, and then I can escape this infernal place. Couldn't Sue put a bubble around herself and then things couldn't grab her that well? Well, certainly Sue did that, and she put bubbles inside everyone's throats. Oh. How do they breathe? Well, they eventually, you know regurgitate them, as you can see. She does it to Ben and Reed. Johnny burns them, and Sue has the bubble around her own head. Cool. So they immediately free themselves, and then just bash the crap out of all these horrible monsters. And the, uh, you know, the, the, the villain reveals themselves to Reed by asking, don't you recognize me? And Reed reveals that it's Janus, who is the Nega Man. What, is he from the Negaverse? He is not. Janus is a jealous colleague of Reed from college who then like insisted on being let into the Baxter building and then Reed does and then he gets sucked into the in, into the negative zone and he is he's horribly cha changed. We just result. need to kill all of Reed's graduating class, clearly. Yeah, no. I uh, mean, it didn't help that, you know, they made fun of him in college and called him Janus the anus. <laughs> yeah, only Ben true. did that. <laughs> but uh yeah, we see like kind of- Oh, my, beware of my terrible portal. <laughs> <laughs> so while they're freeing themselves from Janus's machinations, Nihila shows up and goes, what is this infernal disturbance? <laughs> I'm trying to eat. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm on the can. I don't want to see anybody taking a dump and eating while at the same time. That's horribly embarrassing. Stop oh. taking Stop the killing me. <laughs> Johnny just blasts him with heat. He's like, ah! I have time for you. And they're like, we gotta go. So they just leave. They jump away. And then Johnny just burns a hole through the ground and just drills through the earth wherever they are to end up on the other side. Okay. So Sue and Johnny seem a little OP. Yeah. Well, like, Especially, this is what they always have been yeah. and what they would be if they were let off their leash. I'm not saying wrong with that. I, like, it, it seems like they're more like a dynamic duo right now than... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they don't come up with the big ideas. Yeah, and, Reed's figuring it all out. Exactly, and, uh, and and Ben flies the ship when he's, they have one. He's along for the ride. Yeah. Oh. So they blast on the other side. They're on like, seemingly they're not on like a planet. They're more like on a planetoid or an asteroid or something like that. Oh, it's thank just, God. I thought they were just made up of the bugs. <laughs> it's just a giant bug uh, conglomerate. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, a oh, bunch oh, of memories. Janus is one of them. It's... Mm, it's kind of like that. Oh. So uh, they, they're they like, okay, well, now we know what it is. We're going to leave now. Bye. <laughs> okay, well, that was fun. Yep. Bail? So, Bail. Yeah, bail. Let's go. <laughs> so they uh, they start to, like, leave. And then the entity that r identifies as Janus appears as, like, a giant projection in the in space. where Because they, they, like, launch themselves off of the planetoid into space back where they came, heading back where they came from. And then Janus, like, intercepts them. And uh, yeah, like no, you can't escape me. I'm everywhere. Exactly. And so while they're trying to escape, Reed starts to explain what he believes Janus is, and Janus is like, "Oh, you think I'm what? You're equal? You're a crackpot? A, a a horrible monster?" He's like, "No, I think that like Janus died, and I think that this is a Star Trek episode." Oh. Oh, oh you're taking on the visage of like some something I know. Right. Like, well, it's no, it's not like Contact, where it's like I'm something that's palatable. In this, it's more like. Janus was here and he did do stuff, but like he's gone and like you are something else or a collection of some things that adopted Janus's memory and are, are playing out what it's his just his desires hate are. and malice left behind. Yeah, and like made manifest. Or it's like some kind of entity that had like a clean slate that found what was Janus and absorbed it and now thinks it is Janus. Uh, the Nega Man and is trying to like kill them because they're here. Or re be gain self-awareness or recognized who it was or thought it recognized who it was and then immediately sent for uh, Richards for revenge that it really doesn't need to take. Or maybe it just finally saw something in the negative zone that wasn't a horrifying monster. Yeah. 
Uh, think of him. Hey, you're more pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Think of him as they say, as an echo of who Janus was. Did so, uh, some part of him imprint, imprint onto, onto the atmosphere? Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so he freaks out and he essentially just like chucks them through space. Yeah, okay. And they're like, all right, well, that's over. How dare you tell me the truth? Yeah. So he has to live with that now. I mean, essentially, that's how he's been defeated. Right. And so... Um, <laughs> the, yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> so they're sailing through space, and they notice a planet. And the planet is Earth. But it's not their Earth. It's an Earth in the negative zone. Because Reed has this kind of, like, theory that the negative zone isn't just, like, another dimension. It's a copy. Like, it's a reflection of our dimension. So as such, oh. like anything that like we have, they have like a mirror version of. Oh no. So they're outside, but they're literally, they're just floating in space outside of Earth itself or an Earth. And that the Earth is bombarded continuously by antimatter objects like asteroids and stuff, but they're not penetrating the atmosphere. So there's something on the surface that's protecting that Earth and keeping it pristine and not like corrupted and destroyed by all the activity of the negative zone. And Reed's like, that's kind of neat. Does anybody want to like literally fly at the planet and protect ourselves from re-entry and go on the surface and find out what's up? And everyone's like, no, we want to go home. Only Ben does. Only Ben's like, no, I don't, I'm done. And he like yells at Reed for a minute where he's like, oh, you want to like go flying headlong into danger and uncertainty like we did the last time? Look at me, look at what you made the last time you did something like that. Yeah, maybe I'll grow another arm this time. Yeah, or maybe I'll be made of poop, who knows? Let's roll the dice. I'm guessing you'll be fine though, right, yeah. Reed? Yeah, oh, definitely. I've already done the math. <laughs> well, that's why we're wearing these protective suits. Yeah. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Your chunk will be fine. I didn't have enough material. <laughs> so. I uh, did, I just didn't want to make it. They essentially just get over it and then uh, jump on a rock and then use their combined force to to, to enter the, the planet's atmosphere. Fantastic force. <laughs> <laughs> so they do it, uh, you know, and everybody has like something to do, you know. Sue creates a force field around them. Johnny absorbs the heat that would be generated around the reentry, and uh, you know. Ben cries. Ben can poop his diaper. <laughs> and, and that's that. Ah, oh, pebbled. <laughs> Prick. <laughs> so they arrive and they see the like civilization below them and it's just like, you know, it's a future crazy city that you would see in like a Jack Kirby. Yeah, that's planet. exactly what that looks like. Almost like a New God city. Yeah. Or... Yeah. yeah. It, it looks like a city for those Transformers bears from that Berenstein bear book that cautioned against liking Transformers. Okay. Just a lot of sweeping angles and... You know, crazy colors. Muted palettes of color. I was trying so, oh, Zen La. That's what oh, it was. yeah. So they arrive like in a palatable part of the atmosphere where they can breathe and uh, Reed eventually turns himself into a parachute and carries everybody. But then uh, Johnny is blasted by a laser from a drone which nullifies his powers and just takes him. Then they get attacked by more drones. Oh no, it's from Shrimp Plane. <laughs> yeah, it's that favorite plane of yours. So uh, Ben smashes the drones that are coming picks it up and they land and he's like, who do I get to hit with this big drone that tried to kill me while I was plummeting? And uh, they're like, no, wait. And they get met by a bunch of like soldiers, people from like, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, who look a little bit like the original design for Star-Lord when he first appeared in one of these kind of like oversized Marvel editions. Mm -hmm. So Johnny reveals like, I'm not hurt. They just like stopped me and brought me here, but it's okay. Like they're not trying to kill me. And then we see essentially the like negative zone, Fantastic Four. Just a, it's a foursome of protectors who are on this planet and in this- And what if there was a lion guy? Yeah. <laughs> is that Ben? I guess. Or is that Ben? Yeah, no. Yeah, the big blocky The big thing. blocky thing is Ben for a variety of reasons. But there's a lion guy, a- Who rushes in head first like Johnny would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there is a half European, half Iroquois Native American guy. A, a man in a big robot suit and a woman who's at indeterminate powers that we don't really get into. Mm, okay. So she's obviously invisible woman. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> and we don't patience. care about her. That's right. Moving on. So everybody's speaking like some crazy moon language and it's depicted in this manner where it's like, uh, don't even try to decipher it, just mm -hmm. whatever. And they're like, ah, oh, man. Thing takes one more crackpot about his shorts where he's like, so I'm guessing that this 
Uh, my shorts don't have like a translator doohickey in them that allows me to understand your language. And uh, well, I mean, it does, but you'd have to wear it around your head. Yeah. But then <laughs> the uh, robot like changes his frequency and goes like, "Wait!" And Reed immediately is like, "Maybe these guys descended from some other kind of like maybe Earth is their language here because." This place is some kind of mirror of like our descendants and stuff. And the robot's like, no, <laughs> Dr. Richards. And Reed's like, what? So he takes off his helmet and it reveals to be the guy from this man, this monster. Oh. oh. The portal husk? Yeah, the actual guy, not mm -hmm. the portal husk of that guy. Yeah, not corpse portal. Yeah, that's right. Corpse and portal. I love Thing because he goes, holy crap, Reed, it's the guy. <laughs> That? Yeah, <laughs> like fair. I like that. Uh, so that guy, you know, what's his face? Right. So they're they're uh, so they're chatting it up. You know, he's kind of like giving them the, the skinny about how, like, when he was here, he didn't like all he had was the machine that he used to turn himself into the thing. He didn't have like special protection or a suit of any kind. So uh, he eventually started to like get messed up by just being practically naked in the negative zone, and uh, so. This... He's like, wait, what? No, no, no it's I'm okay. practically you, naked. You have the trunks, though. I didn't have those special trunks that Reed made. Uh, so the rest of your skin, though, that's going to be horribly deformed. Oh yeah, no. But don't Even worry, so. it already is. So, oh yeah, that's right. But um, the 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 people of this world, this like anti Earth or whatever, uh, felt bad for him becoming like negative energy or whatever. So they grabbed him and they shoved what they could into a containment suit, which allows him to retain some semblance of humanity. So is he like a positive being in their negative world? Yes. So there's a lot of like silly ass scientific jargon that Reed explains to explain the like positive and negative aspects of the negative zone versus our reality, but it doesn't freaking matter. What matters is here's that guy from Lomit, this man, this monster, and this is what happened to him when he was stuck here. Mm. Uh, he, be, he got shoved into a suit. And then he grabs uh, the thing and he's like, dude, thank you for everything. Because I like, found my purpose and my humanity by impersonating you and understanding like all the things that you had and all the things were all the things that I wanted. Aww. Like I was a better man when I was you. And things like, holy crap. <laughs> like I'm getting fucked clumped here. Yeah. And Reed's his... like, Exc excuse me, this isn't about me anymore. <laughs> so excuse me, I'll be interceding. Reed coincidentally made suits that can contain you in the negative zone. So like this guy has some way of being freed from this robot suit. We'll see that in a minute, but... Uh, uh, I s <laughs> what? I thought you had no more fabric left. You'll see. I, I said we'd explain it. Do we get a name? We do. Ricardo Jones. We did get a name, which is kind of funny, because in this, the thing's like, hey, what's your name? <laughs> and he's like, Ricardo Jones. And I'm like, that's cool. And then I remembered that I have, like, this random Web of Spider-Man comic book from the 90s, and in it, uh, we found that out already. What? Because they did a story where Ricardo Jones's brother heard he was in Europe, <laughs> and then he got a letter from his brother being like, "I'm gonna steal from the Fantastic Four," and so. He, and then I, we never heard from him again. Yeah, so he's like, "I have to assume the Fantastic Four murdered him," <laughs> and, and that was that. So. Oh, we didn't murder him. We so just this, didn't have to save him. Yeah. So this dude just looks like this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, he just looks like this because he was drawn by Jack Kirby. He's either gonna look like Rock Hudson, or he's gonna look like a freak, a rock. <laughs> so Reed's like the suit stretches for me. So he stretches it, and then he has Johnny burn the the fabric off. He's like, "Here's some fabric. You can make yourself a suit out of this." Could I have a shirt? No. <laughs> We're talking about Ben. Yeah. Absolutely not. Or some some leg covering. You look boring with clothes, Ben. Could I at least have boots? You used to have boots in the '90s. We're not doing that anymore. I'd mm -hmm. rather draw your four individual toesies. Can I have a trench coat? It's enough with the clothes, Ben. I don't want to hear about clothes for the rest of this trip. <laughs> I'm sending you home. So Reed gives Ricardo the fabric and it moves Ricardo to tears. And uh, you know, they're like, cool. He's like, I thought I thought the the, the that you, Ben, were the greatest, but it turns out it actually is. Actually, Reed. it's whoever this great, beautiful man is, Reed Richards. Uh, the man I saved when I was in the negative zone. Uh, so their plan is like, okay, well we have to leave, but like, we have to leave in space. So I guess we'll like rocket ourselves into space and, and Ricardo's like, no, we, we got stuff for that. Yeah, 
couldn't we just have a portal here? Yeah. What was his plan? Reeds? Yeah. Well, originally they were in space. They were just gonna like fire well, themselves. I know, but like. Oh, when they landed on the planet. Because he's like, we're gonna go on the planet. We're gonna go. Yeah. Well, like, he didn't have a plan. He was like, look. I want everyone's consent before we go to the planet's surface, but I don't have a plan for getting us But he us didn't up. have everyone's consent. No, Ben eventually, like, lamented. No, no, I got three-fourths. That's a majority consent. That's it's right. fine. It's a democracy here. <laughs> so they reveal that apparently they have, like, access to cosmic control rods, which is a holdover from uh, previous Fantasy Four history. Annihilus wields a control rod, oh. which back when... Uh, it's it his remote control for this Roku. Well, it's a, it, it's a negative zone Roku, so it can also... <laughs> <laughs> send you through dimensions. Uh, but it's fun because the control rod, when it's drawn by Kirby, or Ross in this case, is like segmented. It's got like, you know. It's like yeah. sections. It's yeah. like a wizard staff. Exactly. And so uh, they're like, well, well, what we'll do is we'll just break the control rod into four pieces, which is incidentally how much there oh. is. And then you can all wear them on your wrists. And then if you like slap them together, and as Ben says, like click your heels three times, you'll end up back in your reality. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Can they come back whenever they want then? Pretty much. Or is it like one-time use? Nah, I mean, it's a control rod. I uh, The cosmic control rod is infinitely powerful, so my guess is, yeah, you could just do it whenever you want. Okay. But also, like, nobody at Marvel besides Alex Ross, like, read this, so... <laughs> okay, so... I doubt they'll bring it up. Sure. It's also very much like a Valiant comic. Yeah, the guys that have to bang their... Uh, oh, yeah, Quantum and Woody. Woody. Wow. Is that the first time that Quantum and Woody would reference on this couch? Also yes. Also the last. <laughs> so Ben makes sure to point out to Ricardo, like, you just brought us something that Reed didn't invent that got us out of this. So you're my favorite person right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you a sandwich. <laughs> Don't spook me. <laughs> is, is that his counterpart? Yes. Is that why they're shaking hands? Yeah. Sometime later, they uh, they implement their plan. Uh, Ricardo gets his suit. He's like, ah, oh, I'm a dude again. Yay. Or at least I am in this suit. And I'm uh, touching my nipples. Woo! <laughs> 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 So then they... It's a very sheer fabric. Yeah. <laughs> so they hit their nega bands together and they travel through dimensions and they end up back home. And they're like, woo! Also, uh, Johnny makes a point... What do you mean, woo? That was fun. W we still were attacked! Yeah, we won. We do that every day. We didn't win. We just, like, made fun of the thing and it flung us across space. Yeah, it was great. We won and then we got a bonus adventure. Yeah, we got at least two adventures out of this. Plus, uh, Johnny got to, you know, blast Annihilus in the mouth. Does Ricardo go back to his life? He, they offer him. They're like, you want to come home? He's like, I kind of like it here. Like, this is, this. I am a hero here. I'm in a life here. Like, the only thing that sucked was that, like, I didn't have a physical body and I was stuck in a containment suit. But now I'm in a containment suit. Damn it. But uh, it's more form-fitting, I guess. That's nice. It's a lot easier to go to the bathroom in this thing. Right. Now I can go to the bathroom. Well, I mean, I guess it isn't. You could just go to the bathroom in the suit. Right. The other one. Yeah. I'm not the rhino. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they uh, you know, they, they all go to bed or they're heading, you know, into their, you know, quarters. Mm -hmm. Johnny says, "Hey, like you must feel good, Ben, you know? Like the guy dressed up as you and you changed his life for the better." He's like, "Yes, I'm still a rock man though." No. Ben says, uh, "Of course I did. I'm a great guy." Good for you, Ben. So then uh, in the morning, Ben is making himself a sandwich. It's like a redemption sandwich. And he's wearing a t-shirt and shorts. Good for Actual you. shorts. Good for you, Ben. Yeah, well, because it's not a uniform. His uniform is his body and a diaper. So uh, he runs into Reed, and uh, he's just like, yeah, I made my sandwich. Don't spook me or make me upset. Uh, and so Reed then talks about how, like, maybe the negative zone isn't, like, a like a counterpart. Maybe it's that like when we do and make things here, they are engineered in the other universe. Like we we influence that universe with every decision we make here. What if it's the other way around, Reed? Yeah, and so that's the concept. Reed's like, I refuse to accept that. I'm in charge of everything. Yeah, well, he just talks about how, uh, since, well, since it's a negative place, we're the positive place. Sure. So, you know, Great. they're so the reaction from our action. You're the proton, which is boring, and they're the electrons that actually make things happen. I think we're the electrons. No, because electrons are negative. That's true. Or it's what Tiffany says. Yeah. The negative zone is influencing our world. That's where Reed's ideas come from. Mm. Yeah, Reed's not a genius. Right. It's that other guy. <laughs> yeah, it's that... Uh, quiet guy. That quiet guy. It's a very like classic, old-school idea of what the Fantastic Four are. Um, the showcase, obviously, is the art and the color tactics and everything like that. Um, it's so... 
good. I wonder how it sold. I hope it sold well. It doesn't it's have... It's got the name Alex Ross on it. I, I would hope so. Me too. Me too. But uh, yeah, he, uh, he did... I think it was like 10 pages a month. Hey, now that we're home, are we going to dispose of Corpse Portal? Is oh, it yeah. still here? I assume he put it in a jar and put it someplace, in, like, you know, in storage. Like I, assume, I assume the building took care of it. Mm. Obviously, you spend your time just pouring over every page because everything's gorgeous. And as I said, like, you know, the dialogue is utilitarian. It does its job. But there's still some opportunities that Ross uses to, like, infuse a little bit of poetry and a little bit of, you know, whimsy and stuff. So you can have fun with it. Uh, but it, it's supposed to be in service to the art slash story the art portrays. And, uh, and I think it does a fantastic job. I like the story. Yeah. I don't it's, love the story. No, it's, it's not my favorite kind of story, nor is it even my favorite kind of Fantastic Four story, but it is what I think of when anybody mentions the Fantastic Four. Yeah, it's and very synonymous with what they do. Exactly, and who they are. Like, these are explorers, these are inventors, these are secondary superheroes. Like, the superheroics maybe happen only if, like, Blastar or, you know, Atuma is like banging on the Baxter building door. So, otherwise, it's, it's, it's just more or less this. Let's go to another dimension and run into like ne'er-do-wells or, you know, lunatic despots or whatever. Let's solve a small problem and then not really get any answers about the bigger problem that led us here. Right, or let's solve a massive universal destroying problem that was only a problem for another universe. So no one here will ever know what we did and we almost died like 16 times. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's fair. That is the Fantastic Four for me. Uh, though it is not, like, super engaging. It, it, it's, it, but what's great is it's short enough. So you, ju just when you're like, hey, really? It's over. That last <laughs> panel of, like, Ben and Reed talking to each other? Yeah. I was expecting it to turn. I was expecting it to be like, oh, there's like seven more pages yeah. of a fight. Right. Because it followed them. Yeah. No, no. It's just it's just a little like denouement. And of course, like Ben and Reed are best friends. That's the idea. So it's nice that it ends with the two of them kind of like talking to each other and displaying who they are as people. Like, you know, Reed's like, well, we had this adventure and it was awesome and cool. And I got a, uh, you know, I got a chance to showcase my dope new like suit. But it kind of uh, it posed this existential quandary that like I don't know if I, it is palatable to me. And things like, shut up. Who cares? Like, we won. See, Just I, be happy. Ex can't you be happy for once? That's I what he says. I expected the end conversation to be them, to, between them to be Reed going like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, like my decisions usually result in other people paying the price for them. Yeah. And you are a living example of that. And I'm sorry that happened. There are a lot of stories he, where he does that already. Like, it, but I can see how this is essentially Alex Ross's love letter to Kirby and the Fantastic Four. He and does, old school he, monsters. He, he could have also done that. He could have used that as an opportunity to let, like be the final word on Reed's guilt over Ben. Yeah. But Reed uh, never shows any in why the would I? Why would I feel guilty? Yeah. You're better now. You're better. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. I have distinct proof of a time where you went back and reverted mm -hmm. and you were not happy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, in one of the issues that deals with the with Nega Man, uh, I think that's exactly around the same time that Reed invents something that allows for Ben to change into the thing on a whim, like whenever he wants to, at will. And so Ben gets to be the thing, or not, whenever he wants to. And... Uh, he is unhappy, and he does willfully become the thing. Like, there's a moment where he and Alicia are Ben and Alicia, and they're on the subway, and Alicia remarks that, like, no one noticed them. And Ben is like, that's true, and then immediately turns into the thing, and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the thing. F you for not paying attention. Yeah. What a dick! <laughs> that's a really weird characterization for him. Yeah. That just sounds like a flimsy reason to make him the thing again. Well, he only trans... He was just playing with the idea of transforming back and forth. It's not that he chose to be the thing forever because no one noticed him. Uh, that, that would come later. But yeah. Yeah, apparently he likes the attention. It is just like a perfect like attempt at taking something old and making it look new but it, there's just like so many like classic things you know like yeah. sue's body type is very much the body type that you saw from like the 60s like, yeah it is that it is that like shape mm -hmm. here but then you've got these crazy dynamic panels which is you know much more modern like storytelling yes. i 
God. Oh, we gotta f try and find an interrupter in there. Oh my God, I hope there is one. And that like, and like the color palette, like the way he uses colors, even when they do flashbacks, he specifically like switches the palette up. Mm -hmm. and it's just, it's so good. And I love that the palettes are more muted. I love when they do that because it's like, you don't always remember your like memories in full color. It's just oh. so good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not fair. What's well, not fair? We have it. It exists. No, that like there can't be more of these things. Yeah. Like when you see this type of thing, it's like, oh, I'm so thankful that this exists because this is the kind of art that you know is inspiring and beautiful and um, just you you know makes you want to be creative yourself. But but also it's like. But you only get the one. Could he like do a Doctor Strange book? Yeah, yeah. Well, could you love Doctor Strange as much as you love? Yeah, this? like could you love Ditko as much as you love Kirby? <laughs> no, damn it. Marvel promoted it more than DC promotes most of their shit. Despite the fact that DC at least will allow you to make something. Like, Jock wants to make a fucking full-size, crazy-ass Batman story all by himself. He's like, knock yourself out. And good luck selling it, by the way. Because we won't. Yeah. What? But you made it. You, you have a vested interest. And then they go, oh, it didn't sell. We're not going to make another one of those. Uh, fuck you. Maybe you could help me sell it. <laughs> Maybe. Nah. 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 And that's for Full Circle. Uh, I love that it started, it, it actually is Full Circle in so many ways. Like, it has a Full Circle story of its origins. And uh, it's really fun. It's just a really well executed book that you should check out. And if you haven't already, it's in the comments down below. Pick up a copy yourself, tell a friend, <laughs> or get it for them. And, uh, and get these out there because not just Tiffany's desire to see Doctor Strange portrayed in this way, I want Marvel to throw their hat over the wall and push harder, try more things. And what's so frustrating about it is that you did it already. Like, do this innovative newfangled thing called innovation like you did 30 years ago. You could start by reprinting the things that you made 30 years ago. Comic books are a fascinating, funny, beautiful, and frustrating, incompetent medium. I'm, I am constantly beguiled and inspired by it every day. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time with an all-new episode of Backish. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. Well, not you.